I'm at a gypsy. That's a skill a lot of people wish they had. Even just the average guy to know. Like I had a I had a thing. I rode Sunday, and um, well the the time before I rode my bike was, sh- and I but I just didn't really have time to fix it. I didn't have time to play with it. So I did like two terrible motos and then just left <laughs> i was like pretty disappointed and then i rode again on then i went to world supercross i had like a couple weeks off went back to the track and then did my first moto and i was like fuck this thing still sucks yeah and i and i like went and i actually made a bunch of changes and my bike went way better like instantly first lap i went out and i was like oh thank god like this actually i'm gonna enjoy doing this moto and uh but that was honestly one of the first times where i've ever been to a track the bike sucked and then i made it better <laughs> and like yeah. left like happier that that felt like a milestone in my career almost so like was that a thing that you could feel developing over time or it just was sort of second nature like you just didn't even know that you were getting that good at it um you know it, it was kind of a thing that developed and one, one thing I learned, um, you know, kind of the hard way is it's really easy to make your bike worse um, because the <laughs> amount of hours that like, you know, the OEMs have into testing their bikes off the showroom floor, like unless you're, you know, not in the weight range of the bike or, you know, not in the height or whatever the ability is, then the bike's going to be pretty good out of the box if you're, you know, it's going to be set up. So to do anything to it, you better know what you're doing. Like I've had it a million times where I'll have a bone stock bike, I'll get suspension done and I'll test it back to back. And it's like, you know, okay, we got to start with a platform and, you know, go up from there and, you know, keep progressing. Whereas most guys, you know, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't know. They just go with it. And then they're like, man, I just, I'm not feeling good. I'm getting arm pump. Um, you know, same thing with triple clamps. Like a lot of guys, you know, they, they get aftermarket triple clamps and they, they put them on before they even ride the bike. So they, they don't know yeah. what the bike is doing. So my, my advice to guys, a lot of times is just do one little thing at a time and then you'll know what the bike is doing or suspension wise, you know, click it all the way stiff, all the way soft, just so that you know what the bike is doing. And then yeah. you can go from there and, you know, kind of, kind of get the knowledge of what each thing is doing on the bike, you know? Yeah, and I think that, um, at least for me anyway, there's. it's so hard to just feel it on the track. Like, in my mind, or the thing that's kind of, like, helped me lately is to try and learn more about the theory. Like, what's actually happening? Like, what does a spring do? Like, why is there a certain sag rate? Like, why is it that it does what it does? And even... I actually shout out to Michael Lindsay. I was I was watching a video on Vital. He, he made it like years ago, and it was about suspension t- tuning. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but he basically was talking about like think about compression not as hard or soft, but as like speed. So like your compression is like how fast the suspension is going to compress versus how slow the compression is going to um, compress. And I was like, dude, that actually makes so much sense from like a theoretical point of view you know and then so it's like when you're going out on the track if your handlebars are here if you hit a bump and your handlebars go up then it means your compression's too slow instead of too hard you know so it's even like just thinking about or like putting some effort into the more technical side of it like why things happen what what certain things will change the relationship between certain things i think that's all almost as important in my head at least as to being able to feel what it's doing because a lot of times like you're hitting you're going down a hill you're hitting like 25 bumps you've got 25 different compression and rebound strokes in like one second it's like all right so you're gonna be able to actually feel what is happening there and i think that's where you know if if you're the kind of guy that wants to change stuff on his bike and you want to figure that stuff out it's like it almost pays to learn the theory as well as just the practice out on the track. Yeah, absolutely. Super beneficial to know what your bike is doing and, and have it set up right for you. Like I can't tell you how many guys come up at our local track, you know, and they're just like, you know, what do I do for my suspension? I can't figure it out. I it's doing this, it's doing that. It's like, you know, first step, like, have you checked your sag? 
Yeah. And they're like, no, we, what's, you know, what's SAG, what's all that. So, you know, it, it's, it's been cool kind of, you know, trying to explain it and help guys and all that. But, um, you know, it's, it's beneficial to know what's going on. Cause like, like you said, I mean, there's so many adjusters and clickers on the modern day bike. It's, it's easy to go backwards. Like e- even myself, I'll, I'll be testing suspension and I'll think that, you know, it's, it's way too stiff going down a hill when really it's too soft and it's just too far down into the stroke. And it, it's easy to confuse that stuff. Um, if you're not really trying, trying around on it all. Yeah. And I think too, I mean, I went, it was only a couple of weeks ago. I got some new, I got some new forks given to me and, um, and I was just wanted to get them. It weren't exactly set up right. Like I just kind of put them to where they came and it, wasn't a hundred percent and it was the first time where i just i took a screwdriver and i went out on the track after i'd finished riding and i just did a section i like did a section rode back up to the top of the hill wound the rebound all the way out did the section again a few times went all the way in did the section again a few times and like i'd never really done that you know and it was so beneficial to just spend that 20 minutes of just dicking around with it i mean i kind of went back to where i was but just to have a bit more like extreme understanding of what the bike's doing too i think a lot of times guys will be like they'll do two clicks and then they'll go ride and then they're like ah oh, no and then they'll do another two clicks and then they go it's like you're sort of just not really getting enough of like polarity to tell and that, you know even that it's like i just don't know how many times people do that on a regular basis Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, the, the going one click at a time, it, it can be frustrating, but you know, you're like, am I making progress? Am I not making progress? And you know, it's, it's so crucial, especially like even at the supercross level with the, the amount of teams that, you know, there, a lot of times there'll be a factory part and you know, the, the rider doesn't want it cause it feels stiffer, but the team wants you to run it because you know, it's, it's safer or more rigid or it's, it's frustrating sometimes at that level because what the bike feels like, like if the bike is comfortable riding supercross, it's probably not set up right. Cause you're not able to bash into stuff and all that, you know, yeah. so it's, it's, it's a fine line of of what's good and what's not at at the at the very highest level and it's it's uh it's frustrating at times you know i i see it a lot like um you know i think uh james was talking about you know with master pool between the difference between the factory bikes and you know a stock form bike like you know a lot of times on the factory bikes they'll have their frames all welded up make it rigid and all that and when the factory bike is good it's really good and when you're having an off day it's gonna feel really off and uh yeah you know that that couldn't be more true when he when he said that i was like you know that that make that makes sense and you know i i haven't had you know much time on any factory bikes and um you know just the stuff that we try you know that can be true with we are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site gypsytales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang. 